So if you found this video, you've probably found it because you are looking for a little bit of help at GCSE Inheritance. Maybe you want to know what all the key terminologies around it and you want an example of an exam question. So that's exactly what I'm going to do very quickly for you now. And then we'll go home and have some chips or something. I don't know. Um, key term number one, phenotype. Don't be put off by that being an odd looking long word. Phenotype is dead easy. It's just what you see when you look at somebody. So both of these characters here are black hair. So they have a phenotype for black hair. The guy on the left has a blue face. So he's got a phenotype for a blue face. The one on the right has got brown eyes. He's got phenotype for brown eyes. Dead easy. It's just what you see. Yeah, and when I look at you, I see a phenotype for a big nose and no hair. <laughs> Genotype, a little bit more complicated, but really not much. Genotype just tells us what the alleles we have are for every characteristic. So you'll know that every characteristic, at least at GCSE level, is controlled by two different alleles, one from mum and one from dad. Sticking with her colour, the guy on the left has a big B and a little B, and the guy on the right has a big B and a big B. They are the genotypes. Now, the genotypes, um, you'll be told what the letters mean when you go into the exam. Uh, it'll be on the question. You don't have to go in knowing them. So I will tell you now that the big B stands for black and the little B stands for brown. So if we look at the guy on the right, his genotype is black, black or big B, big B. So it's obvious to understand why he's got black hair. The one on the left has a little B and a big B. So why does he not have brown hair, or why does he not have a mixture of brown and black? Why does he just have black? Well, the third key term I want to introduce is the word dominant. Whenever we have a question like this, one of the alleles will be given to you as a capital letter. That will be the dominant allele, the one that will be expressed, the one that will take over the stronger allele, the one that we see in the phenotype. So the one on the left has black hair because black is a dominant. The lowercase letter, in this case brown hair, is the recessive and we will not see the recessive. Yeah, so genotype are just the letters that you write. That's it, it's just the letters and you don't have to go into the exam knowing what letter means what. You'll be given that. So just write the two letters, genotype done. Easy peasy. Okay, so let's move across to eye colour now and use that to try and improve our terminology, see what other keywords we can pick up. The guy on the left has got two recessive alleles. His alleles are both the same. Just like the guy in this picture on the right, the green face guy, both his alleles are the same there. And when your alleles are the same, you are said to be homozygous. So the guy on the left here is homozygous for the black hair allele and the guy on the left here is homozygous for the red eye allele. But let's expand that term even more. When we look at the guy on the right here with the, the double capital B, because we know they are dominant, we would actually use the term homozygous dominant. And for the guy on the left here with the two uh, recessive alleles, he will be homozygous recessive. So what if you are not homozygous? What if they are different to each other? Uh, like the guy on the right with the green face, he's got the capital B and the little r, they will be called heterozygous. So if both your alleles are the same, then I can call you a homo. Uh, no, cats, that's not quite what, what, what we mean. You are homozygous if they're both the same. So you're a homo. No, homozygous if they're both the same and heterozygous if they're different. Okay, right. Um, and remember, if you're talking about homozygous and you follow it with the term recessive or dominant. Okay, so not just homo then. Don't ever say that again. So let's just quickly run down that terminology. Uh, phenotype is just what you see when you look at somebody. So if they've got blue eyes, that is their phenotype. If they've got black hair, that is their phenotype. If they've got 12 arms, that is their phenotype. Genotype are the alleles that that person has. So if somebody's got a capital B and a lowercase b, that's just their genotype. If somebody's got two lowercase r's, that is their genotype. It's the two alleles they've got. Dominant is the allele that you, is given to you as a capital letter. It will always be the one that's expressed over the lowercase letter. The lowercase letter we will say is recessive. So if somebody's got a capital letter which is dominant and a lowercase letter, we won't see that recessive allele. Okay, It won't be expressed in the phenotype. Homozygous is what we call somebody if both their alleles were the same. But remember, if both of them are recessive, we would call them homozygous recessive. And if they're both dominant, we call them homozygous dominant. Heterozygous is a term we use when they have one of each allele. Brilliant that. Yeah, I, I wasn't bored at all. Really interesting. Anyway, what you did say earlier was you were going to tell us the difference between a gene and an allele. And we make it a bit snappy. You're making me fall asleep. This is dull. 
Oh yeah, I did. So the difference between an allele and a gene. Well, an allele is just a flavor of a gene. And what do I mean by that? Well, genes control characteristics. So again, sticking with her color, her color is a characteristic, so it's controlled by genes. But we can have brown hair, we can have blonde hair, we can have red hair. These are the flavors of that gene, the flavors of that characteristic we can get. They are the alleles. So uh, another characteristic could be height, but we could be tall or we could be short. So tall and short are the alleles, uh, whereas the characteristic, the height, is going to be the gene. Okay, what I should really make clear though, is that if you're going to write down the definition of an allele on the exam paper, you call it a version of a type of a gene. That wouldn't make much sense on its own without the explanation we've just had though. Cats, that's brilliant. Well done, mate. You have been studying. Shut up. Anyway, you can get studying. Studying how to clean that poo I've just left on your pillow. <laughs> So one of the types of questions you will undoubtedly get on your GCSE paper is something like this. Here we're presented with two characters and we're going to be asked if these two had a, uh, a child, what would the percentage chance be of their offspring having red eyes? So how do we answer that? It's fairly straightforward. We are going to take one of them and place them at the top of the paper. We're going to take the other and put them at the side. And then we're going to draw a little square that looks like this. Now, this is called a Punnett square, and you can see by the red arrows what I've done. I've uh, taken each of the alleles, and I've placed them either at the top of the columns or on the side of the rows. That should be fairly self-explanatory what I've done there. To fill this in, I'm going to take this allele here, and I'm going to write it in every one of those squares along that row. I'm then going to take this allele here, and I'm going to do the same. I'm going to put in every one of those squares along that row. And then I'm going to do the same with the alleles at the top. I'm going to drop them down into the columns below them. So we get something like this. Now, this has done every possible combination of those alleles from those two characters we've got. And in the questions you'll get, there's always going to be just four possible combinations. And if I look at those combinations, I can see that the top two have got, uh, they are heterozygous. They will have brown eyes because they have the capital B, which is a dominant. But the two at the bottom will have red eyes because they are homozygous recessive. So two out of four or a 50% chance of them having red eyes. Now, how might a seemingly similar simple question, that was good, wasn't it? A seemingly similar simple question. You know, if you think being able to say that is actually good, then I think that explains to me why your life is so lonely and sad. Anyway, get onto that seemingly sim simple, sim the simple, get onto that seeming simple question. How would that... Uh, maybe catch you out a little bit. Well, you might get a question that looks a little bit like this. What is the percentage chance of a child being a carrier? And you get this question when we're talking about recessive diseases. Now, a recessive disease is a disease caused by an allele that is the recessive one. Cystic fibrosis is by far the most common example that they'll give you. If we look at the screen here, we have capital C's and little c's. The little c here, the recessive allele, is the one that will give you the disease. Now, if I fill that box in, we can see that only the child in the bottom right has two little c's. The only the child in the bottom right is homozygous recessive, so only he will have the disease. Only he will have cystic fibrosis. But why have I not circled him? Why have I circled the other two? Okay, well, let's remember what the question is. What is the percentage chance a child will be a carrier? And this is where these questions catches out because our definition of a carrier is often misunderstood. A carrier cannot be somebody who has the disease. That child in the bottom right cannot be a carrier because he has that recessive disease. A carrier has to be somebody who has the recessive allele but doesn't have the disease. So in other words, somebody who is heterozygous, they've also got the dominant healthy allele. So in this uh, situation, we have two out of the four that are heterozygous, um, so two out of the four that are carriers. Well done.